in most societies, inequality and poverty are seen as big challenges, are seen as things that governments should or want to or both change. Now, what we will do in this and the next couple of videos is we will talk about how to measure inequality and poverty and what governments can do to reduce it. So let's dive into this. Um, first of all, what do we mean by each of those terms? Are they the same? Or are they not the same? The answer is they are not the same, but they are obviously related. So inequality refers to an unequal distribution of income. This is at least how we use it. Um, there is also obviously other forms of inequality, inequality of health outcomes, for example, or the inequality of wealth, um, the inequality of talent, um, the inequality in terms of home ownership. Some people own a home, others don't. Some people own a big house, others are small. All these are inequality measures. But whenever I talk about inequality here, we're talking about income inequality. Poverty, on the other hand, of, often but not always goes hand in hand with, low, with uh, high inequality. Poverty refers to the existence of very low incomes. So if you remember, we had in one of the previous videos, we looked at the share of people in a given country living below a certain poverty line. Um, and the way it works is basically we draw an arbitrary line where we say, okay, this is the minimum someone needs in terms of income to, to, to have a, a, a decent life, whatever that means. And anyone who has an income below that uh, we consider as poor. Now there are advantages of, uh, of using, of measuring these things. Um, but one advantage is uh, we can actually use it for accountability of, of governments. We can say, okay, if we want to reduce inequality or if we want to reduce poverty, well, we should first of all measure them. Okay? So, uh, and that, that to me is actually the main advantage of, of using them. The problem with using them is that, that obviously condensing all the social issues in a country into one number and then trying to reduce that number will not do away with all the social challenging we're facing, challenges we're facing. I think about in Ireland for years, there has been a, a debate about homelessness and uh, the measures that governments have, uh, that various governments have put in place have clearly not been sufficient to, to eliminate this, this problem. Um, and uh, that clearly has to do with, with poverty. But if we reduce the number of poor people, it's not said that we will necessarily do away completely with homelessness as well. So, um, so it's good to have those measures because governments that put public policies in place can be held accountable with them and also themselves can, can check their progress. But it's not the... It, it shouldn't be the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal should be something more meaningful to the people, which is you know, reducing bad life circumstances, whatever that, that is uh, to, to each individually or to the But there's also one important distinction to be made, which is something that you often hear directly or, or implicitly in, in public debates about about inequality or about equality, uh, which is the difference between equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. See this here as, a, a, it, as an illustration. Um, there are those three boys, men who watch a, a baseball game. And you can see here on the left, you have equality of opportunity. So every person has the same opportunity to watch the match, right? So they're given rates at the same 
or boxes of the same height. So everyone gets the same box. So they all have, in theory, the same opportunity. But you can obviously see that the guy on the right is very, very small. And so, so uh, he, he cannot, you know, for him, this is not enough. Whereas the, the illustration on the right shows you equality of outcome by which a government, you know, if, if this is what a government cares about, the government would basically provide more help to those who need it more. And one, our intuition might tell us, well, why don't we always do it the, the way that is illustrated here on the right? Um, why it, it, this should be natural, that, that should just be the done thing. Um, but it's actually not that easy, as, as we will see also in the remainder of this lecture and, and the lecture on taxation, which is that, so, so the complication with this is that as a government, we don't typically know who is, uh, if, if we see lots of people, who of them are the ones who are in need of help and, and, and those who don't. So the, the danger is, and, and the, the challenge is that we would give, if we don't know that, we would give help to a lot of people who actually don't need it. And that can be very expensive and can lead to all sorts of, uh, sorts of further challenge. Yeah, but but this, is, this is just to, to be aware that there are those two different viewpoints. And if you look at the, you, you know, if you follow the public debate in many countries, if you think about what the different positions of political parties are, um, then you will see that there are some parties and in, in some cases, even entire countries that seem to, whose society seem to favor more equality of opportunity rather than equality of outcome. Now, again, here, I want to, even though this is mainly a, a, a challenge that is addressed within countries, I, I want to give you quickly the, the big picture um, globally on, on equality of opportunity. Now, measuring equality of opportunity is very, very hard. You know, we can measure equality of outcomes. We can measure incomes and the income inequality very easily. Can we measure equality of opportunity? It's hard. It's actually because we don't know what opportunities different people had. And there are often also wild speculations. You know, is someone rich? because they, they put in so much effort into whatever they were doing, or is that person rich because they were just lucky? And uh, depending on where people stand in, in this, you know, when they ask themselves this question, that seems to be highly predictive of, you know, how much they are in favor of taxation and of, of, of spending, so, so in um, uh, redistribution. But let me show you the big picture. Now, this is, Again, measuring equality of opportunity is very, very tricky because, you know, how, how would you know what opportunities I had and how would I know myself? That, that is very difficult. But there are obviously some metrics that we can use, especially across countries. Um, and, and so here are some that, that also the, the United Nations would use or the World Bank would use. So, for example, child mortality or life expectancy, uh, years of schooling, um, and, uh, and also obviously average income. Um, and you can see here that across countries, there are huge discrepancies. So, for example, here, in terms of child mortality, which is obviously a huge indicator for, for hygienic standards for the health system, um, it, because a childbirth obviously doesn't doesn't you know biologically work differently in in Iceland uh, it, than it does in in Somalia. Um, so so the difference must come from from the institutions in in countries, and you can see the global average is about three point nine percent of all children don't survive uh, until age or, or die before the age five. Um, in Iceland, th these are very, very few, um, whereas in Somalia is the country with the, the highest share. It's actually very, very high. And so, so you know, to, to some extent, what family you're born into and what country you're born into is guided by the luck of the draw. You, none of us could decide that. Um, and, and so th there is a huge lottery going on, basically, that if, if you are 
you know, lucky to be born into uh, a a in you know, a country where child mortality rates are low because the health system is good. You have a much bigger chance of surviving after age uh, after age five, oh, up until age five and and, and later. Um, the same goes for life expectancy. You know, the, the global average is 72. So this is the life expectancy at birth of all the people who are currently alive. And so um, the, also notable here, the global average in uh, 1800 was 29 years. So, so humanity has progressed a lot. But, but basically in, you know, the, the country with the lowest life expectancy uh, Sierra Leone just 52 years and and then Japan notoriously at the top with with 84 years of life expectancy on average. So so we can see here that you know there there are huge uh, differences again in equality of opportunity. So why do people live longer? Again, you know part has to do with healthy lifestyle, with more education, pollution, with all sorts of things. Again, if born in, in in a country, you know, if the, the luck of the draw was that, that you're born in a country that does very well, the likelihood that you live longer is, is very high relative to uh, being born in a country that, that does not do that well. And the same you can also think about for, you know, years of schooling. Um, there's obviously a difference between quantity and quality of schooling, but the countries that are here at the top and Happy to emphasize that, but the, the you know there is obviously a correlation also between the the quantity and the quality of, right? um, and and the same you can think about for for average income. So in a nutshell, there is huge differences in econo in the um, inequality of opportunity, and you can also think about the same. Yeah, within countries, right? If you think about uh, children who grow up in, uh, in disadvantaged neighborhoods, um, there is, you know, they obviously don't have the same opportunity as as children who grow up maybe in richer neighborhoods. There is a lot of research showing that, and the big question is then what are the root causes of that difference, right? So, you know, is is it uh, is it the families? Is it the education system? Um, and also, if we know the root causes, but well, what can remedy that, that we can give them actually the same opportunities if they don't have that to, to begin with? So these are important questions that social scientists of all disciplines are currently working on. Now, we will dive in, in the next video a bit more into how to actually measure inequality Poverty. So here is just the, the starting point. Um, so we measure inequality typically at the household level, okay? because households, so, so we measure inequality across households. Not, I have more than my brother, but it's more if, if myself and my brother and my parents are in the, same, uh, in the same household, then we take our joint income or the average income of our household, depends on the measure, and we compare that to other households. And so the idea here is that we take all N households. So for example, in Ireland, there is probably a, a million or more households. And um, we, we oftentimes take the average income per household and then say we line them up from the household with the lowest income, that would be YA, to the household with the highest income. And, and then we can, you know, that gives us the distribution of, of, of incomes it is simply given by those incomes we see here. And, and so what we want to do is we want to take this, this income distribution and condense that into a single number, into a single inequality measure. Okay? That, that we can then say, okay, is, is one society more unequal than another and how much more unequal than another? And how did the inequality in a society change over time? These are questions that we can only answer when we have, when we form an index that makes these different things comparable. Now there is, 
when you do that and when you do research on that, um, uh, for example, if you work in a research institute, you will always face the criticism from social scientists from other disciplines who may say, well, that's, that's a pretty poor me measure for people's life circumstances, right? If, uh, it may not make sense to compare the inequality of, uh, of people in Somalia with the people in, in Ireland. And, and there is something to be said about that. So I'm not claiming at all here that, that, that these inequality and poverty measures are the, 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 you know, the only things we, we should measure and they tell us everything about inequality by no means. They are a starting point, but they're, they're, they're useful. They're useful because we can compare, for example, inequality between countries that are, you know, at a similar level of development. We can compare, we can look at inequality over time, for example, in Ireland, how it developed uh, be before the, and during and after the financial crisis of the late 2000s. So there is lots of things we can do with those measures.